Well, good morning. Here we are in the book of Matthew. We are journeying with Jesus and his disciples, learning what it means to be a disciple. We have seen miracles and healings. Recently, a woman encouraged Jesus to change his mind. The woman persisted. And then last week, Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? If you weren't with us last week, I hope you're thinking about that question. Who do we say Jesus is? And Peter is then called a rock for his faith, not being inspired by world, but being inspired by divine. And so then, here we are continuing this conversation. Jesus goes from praising Peter to rebuking Peter. Because nobody, and if you like to talk about death, talk to me. Because I don't know many of us who enjoys talking about death. And here in this text, it is also found in Mark and Luke as well. Jesus speaks to his disciples about death, about his horrible, gruesome death. And so this is not the first time we have talked about the cross. But in that time, the cross was the worst way to die, it was execution. It was humiliation and condemnation. And that is the way people died at the hands of the chief priests and those in power and the kings. So Jesus, after talking to these disciples about who do you say that I am, has this conversation that, yep, yep, I'm going to undergo suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And then on the third day and be raised. Whoa. If you were standing there with Jesus and he had just started doing all these, mind you, this is not the first time in, this in the Gospel of Matthew that we hear about the cross because it's contextual. It is a part of their culture. And so Jesus said earlier in this book about how we have to take up our cross and deny ourselves. But this is really hard stuff to hear. Deny ourselves. Take up the cross. What does this even mean? Let alone to his followers back then. But for you and me now, Many of us wear crosses as symbols. And sometimes I don't know what we symbolize. Each of us, it's different. Because for some of us, we see it as a sign of salvation. The cross is where Jesus saved us. But for others, it means other things. I know for a long time, I have wore a cross not as a symbol that I am going to be saved one day, and this is how Christ died and saved me. But the part of this text and other texts like it, the cross represents suffering, and the suffering that Christ had encountered, and that in our suffering, 
in Christ's suffering and in our suffering. We're not alone on this journey. So really, what does it mean to deny oneself and take up the cross? I think to the disciples, it was a reminder to them that, yes, you have left everything behind. And man, do you want it to be easy? But it's not. This is Jesus reminding them that this life doesn't always lead to flowers and roses. That Jesus was on his way to death. And for the disciples and for us, we too have to be okay with the hard way. Not the easy road, but the hard road. The good news in this text, amidst all this stuff we don't understand, and amidst a time that we are suffering in ways that we have never in some of our lifetimes, the good news is that Jesus is calling us to live in harmony, Jews and Gentiles. Greeks, slaves, and free, brother and sister, black and white, rich and poor. God is calling us to live in harmony with one another, but also that on this road, it may not be easy. But when we see this cross, when we pick this cross up and following Jesus, Jesus took something in a, con a time that meant condemnation, the worst way to die. And he conquered death through that. There is hope for us. There is hope for you and me. There is especially hope during this time of uncertainty and unknown. This journey, as we all know, is full of suffering and pain. But we're not alone. And we'll stumble. Just last week, Peter confessed who Jesus was. And then this week, Jesus rebuked him. That's powerful stuff. Because it knows, it shows me at least, that I don't have to have all my crap together. And I can pick up my cross today, and I can fumble. And there's going to be hard times where I just want to say, God, really? But Jesus here is showing us that he is with us. He is on this journey with us. And as our next song is normally referred to as the summons, will you come and follow me? This is an invitation to, from God, from Jesus. Jesus is calling our name to pick up this cross and follow him. No matter how hard it is, we are invited on this journey with Jesus. We are invited to continue to learn and grow. As we continue this summer learning about what it means to be a follower of Christ, a follower of Jesus. Hear this message today, this good news. We are not on this journey alone.
we are journeying together. The love of God surrounds each one of us. I invite you to pray with me. God, as we continue your word, to live your word in our lives and embrace it, Lord. We thank you for the letter that Paul wrote to the Romans. It reminds us of unity that we have in you and through you. And we thank you that Jesus spoke to us on the easy stuff and the hard stuff, but especially on days like today. When we hear hard truths, take up my cross, take up the cross and follow me. Lord, help us be your disciples and follow you. May we find life only in you. And may we find comfort and peace that through the suffering of this life and this journey, you are with us, meeting us each step of the way. In your son's name, amen. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you 